Hi, this is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of September 30th, 2024. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website, weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.10 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the project's page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the Weekly Top 3 also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you can also follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, We explain why those urging PFD cuts aren't against free money. They just want it to go in their pockets instead. Second, we explain the fundamental hypocrisy of many pushing for increased K-12 spending. And third, we explain how Senator Jesse Bjorkman has become so desperate to avoid defending his own record, he's taken to lying about others. And now, let's join Michael. Brad, uh, lots of stuff to cover today, so I want to get uh, want to get right into it. We're going to start off uh, start off with a bang. Back to first principles is kind of the beginning. Of the, who pays? Who pays? Is the multi gazillion dollar question, Brad? Let's uh, let's get started with it. Well, Michael, I've been hearing a lot of uh, a lot of pushback on uh, on on the PFD argument. Uh, uh, lately about people who are saying, oh, it's free money. It's better spent on public goods. Why are you even trying to defend it? We all know it'd be better that that, uh, that we just let the legislature uh, do what it's going to do and spend that money and bring us, bring us free things. Um, and that's sort of taken me back to first principles about, about how you look at what's going on with the PFD and, and how you look at what's going on with PFD cuts. To do that, I sort of go back to uh, some comments that Rick Halford, former Senator Rick Halford, former Senate President Rick Halford, probably the best connection we have this era has between between the Hammond era and and the current era. Some comments Halford made before uh, before a legislative committee a few years ago when he was describing the the PFD and sort of describing the Alaska before the PFD and Alaska after the PFD. And Halbert, Halford was saying, look, what we had were taxes before the PFD, what or before before oil earnings. We had taxes. And we had, you know, people, uh, we had a, 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 a an income tax that was tied to the federal income tax. And we had people, you know, uh, people paying taxes based upon what they were paying in their in their federal taxes. And when oil came in, when oil came in through the form of, of, of royalties and production taxes, and ultimately later came in through the form of using permanent fund earnings, when oil came in, that really was a dividend for people who were paying taxes. Hammond at one, or, or Halford at one point talked about the $100,000 dividend. And what he was describing was the fact that people who had been paying high taxes, $100,000 in some cases, people who had been hang, paying high taxes suddenly got bailed out by all of the oil money coming in. And he said, what we, what we forget about is that that's how you pay for government. You pay for government through taxes. People pay for government uh, through taxes. And when, and when the oil money came in, we just lost that connection and lost, and lost lock on it. What to bring that down to the present day? What 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 Hammond's vision was was that once we have once we were using permanent fund earnings, once the permanent fund was spending off earnings, fifty percent of that would go to the people, largely benefiting middle and lower income Alaska families, 
And 50% of that would continue to be used for the purpose that Halford described uh, when, when, oil, when oil revenues came in, 50% would be used to subsidize taxes. Now, some people say, well, that's really to pay for government, that the 50% is being used to pay for government. It's not. It's really being used to subsidize taxes. And when you look at the economics of this, there's a split. 50% of, of, of the earnings going to pay for going to government to subsidize taxes benefits the top 20% non-residents and the oil companies who would otherwise pay taxes, increased taxes, in order to pay for that increased government spending. 50% of the, the other 50% that so goes to the PFD largely benefits middle and lower income Alaska families by being a supplement to their income. What's happening when we have PFD cuts is what's really going on is this. The 50% that Hammond said would be used, would be available for government, in essence, to subsidize taxes, isn't enough to pay, to subsidize, fully subsidize taxes, to pay for full government costs. The 50%, that 50%, pays it it we we've, we've expanded government spending so far so high that that 50% doesn't cover it all anymore and what's really going on here is that those who are are, are subsidized by that other 50% those who don't have to pay taxes by that other 50% are suddenly confronting the reality that oh my gosh my 50%s already used up I'm going to have to pay some taxes. I'm going to have to bear some costs of this increased government spending that I'm that I'm that I'm going on. I don't want to do that. And so their response to that is not to push against government spending. I mean, you you never saw Natasha or you never saw you never see Bert really pushing against government spending is not to push back against government spending and say, don't spend any more because I don't want to pay for it through taxes. What you see them doing is saying, oh, there's this other 50% over here that's being distributed to the benefit, largely to the benefit of middle and lower income Alaska families. And I'm going to go grab some of that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to stop the problem, which is increased government spending. I'm going to increase my subsidy against that government spending by going and grabbing free money and use it as an additional subsidy against those increased costs of government. Right. And that's really what the what the struggle is here. People who, who say they're against free money, they're against free money going to Alaska families. Really, all that's going on is they want more of the free money for themselves. They want to use that free money to continue to subsidize their taxes, to continue to have the $100,000 dividend that Rick described. They want to continue to use that money to get to to keep them in a tax free haven, and 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 continue to dodge use that free money to continue to dodge having to pay taxes. Well, some pe some people will then push back and say, "Oh, well, but the but the other eighty percent would have to pay taxes too." Yes, but we've done the numbers over and over and over and over and over and over again, and the numbers show that even even a sales tax, which is the most regressive tax that you can think of out there, even a sales tax would take less from Alaska families, from the other 80% of Alaska families than PFD cuts are. The other 80% of Alaska families would be better off getting their PFD, even if they have to pay some taxes. The ones who aren't are the other, is the, is the other side, the top 20% non-resin oil, non oil who would have to pay more in terms of taxes than they than the, than than they're suffering in terms of PFD cuts, and it's not so. It's not really about oh, free money is better spent on government. It's really about free money. It's better spent subsidizing our costs, subsidizing taxes we would otherwise have to pay, than than going to you, than going out to than going out to the other eighty percent of Alaska families. And, and justify and justify to us the expenditures of those taxes because then we'd have to be paying for it out of pocket. Right, 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 right. That's that's where it kicks in. I mean, if Natasha had to pay taxes instead of getting her her full tax cost subsidized by stealing by taking money from the other fifty percent, if she had to pay taxes on that, 
she'd push back on costs. But because she doesn't, because she's been successful in, in, in increasing her subsidy by taking money from the other side by, through PFD cuts, she doesn't push back on spending. That, that's, that's the entire explanation of what's been going on in Alaska in the, in the, in the 2000 teens uh, and thus far in the 2020s. The, the increased government spending, we haven't had a decrease in increased government spending. We haven't had a slowdown in increased government spending because the top 20% who otherwise would be, ta- would be burdened by taxes have found a way to escape that by taking money from the other 50%. So when somebody says, oh, it's free money, it's better spent on the government. No, what you're really saying is it's free money, it's better spent subsidizing the taxes I would otherwise have to pay on the increased cost of government. It's, it's free money that I that's better used in my pocket than in your pocket. It's better, it's better for me to have it. It's better for me to have it and use that as a tax subsidy than it is for you to have it. And it's and it's really, I mean, it's you can tell it irritates me when people use this free money argument. Because we know better than you how to spend that money, right? I mean, Brad just used a lot of words to say what I've been saying for years. We have a spending problem, not a revenue problem. I mean, that's basically what it boils down to. But this is the avoidance. This is the avoidance component of it. We don't have to spend it because we can just take it from you without actually having to tax you and have you have an approval or actually have any kind of say in it. And so we could just continue the party on as much as we'd like. Yeah, and those who those who say, those who say, look, the PFD is going to go away anyway. Just you know, just just lean back and let it happen. That's where it's going. What they're essentially saying is, just lean back. The top twenty percent is going to continue spending. They're going to continue taking your money. They're going to continue subsidizing their taxes. They're not going to put a stop to the spending because it doesn't impact them at all. As long as they can take your money, as long as they can take the other fifty percent of the money to subsidize themselves. And, and we're just going to keep on letting that go on. Well, no, right. I, 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 for one, am not going to stop talking about it because that's exactly what's going on. Yeah. This is, this is a struggle between two segments of Alaska citizens. One's trying to create this tax haven for the top 20% non-residents and oil companies. And the other's just, you know, the other's just being robbed, the others being taxed in terms of PFD cuts. The others being being taken for a ride in terms of draining, you know, their their share of of Alaska wealth. However you want to put it, however Randy wants to put it, that's what's <clears throat> that's what's going on. It's a shift out of the pockets of eighty percent of Alaska families into the pockets of top twenty percent non-res and oil because they're not having to pay for the taxes for the increased spending that they're approving. I think the most insightful thing you said today was the fact that they're just saying, lean back, don't fight it, just let it happen. What does that sound like? It sounds like that creepy guy with a rohypnol is what it sounds like. And that's exactly how we've been affected by this. They just lean back, let it happen. Don't fight it because we're going to do, because we know better than you how that money should be spent. That's the bottom line. I almost feel dirty at that point. Just lean back and let it happen. Just don't fight it. I mean, (laughs) that's what I feel like right now. We're being, you know, we're being eased into it so gently, so gently. We just let your betters talk. Let the betters talk this morning and uh, and do their thing. Um, it's uh, it, it's you know, and of course, it always comes back to the one and only thing that these guys want, which is just more, more, right? Yeah. That's what they want, right there. That's Tra- the, trademark. I like that. Trademark. You like that? Yeah, no, we trademark that. That's a trademark right there. You know, <laughs> what do we want? We want. Yeah. You know, that's what it's all about. So, um, but you're I'm 100% right, Brad. I mean, that's exactly what it comes down to. We want to avoid, we don't want, I mean, you know, uh, 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 Harold said, you know, you listen to what Brad's saying. He's describing the command economy. They, they want direct access to the resources by the government. That's why I've often advocated that if you really wanted to straighten this up, you just give the people the direct benefit of it every year, you know, give them all a check for $16,000 a piece, 
and then watch the whole world burn when you issued them a tax bill for 14000 of that $16,000 every year, fourteen five or whatever it is, and then see how soon the government came to a screeching halt in the state because people would be outraged. Wait, I just got 16000 and now I got to give you 14500 What are you do? What have you done for me lately for that $14,500 per person, right? Yeah, well, it's it's um and and that's that's the very thing that Natasha and Bert and and Click and others are trying to get you to avoid thinking about. They're saying, "Oh, we're doing good. We're spending it on the public. We're doing good. We're spending it on increased university and increase, increase K through 12. All of these public goods, they're for the good of all of us." Well, if they're so good, pay for it yourself. Don't steal somebody else's money to subsidize your tax bill. Don't take money out of middle and lower income Alaska families. 80% of Alaska families don't take money out of their pocket to pay for it. If it's so friggin' good, pay for it yourself. Increase, increase the burden on you at the same rate you're increasing the burden on everybody else to pay for it. And, and, and then you get, oh no, but it's free money and, and you know it should be spent on on all these on all these public goods, and I get to decide. I, as a legislator, get to decide where it's spent, and people like me because I get to decide where it's spent. And people buy me lunch, and people, you know, invite me to groundbreakings, and people do all sorts of things that make me feel good because I get to spend it. But I don't have to pay for any of it myself. Right? Isn't exactly. this great? <laughs> yeah. Well, and even Kyle, who we know is just in some cases, wanting to stir the pot a little bit. He says, whether it's a PFD tax or an income tax, it's collected for the citizens. When it's spent still in the government deciding how to spend it, the logic from both of you does not track. Except for at least if it was an income tax that was something like a flat tax or something, there would be an equitability to it. Instead of heaping the burden on the backs of the lowest 80% of the income earners in the state. That's the difference. The difference is the diversionary amount here where they're getting essentially the free ride in comparison with income levels. Um, so that logic tracks as much as, you know, you can't deny that. Yeah, Kyle's a former legislator. It, it, it shows the problem that legislators have. They don't think about things distributionally. They don't think about how things hit by income bracket. At a gross level, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, you call it a PFD cut, you call it an income tax, you call it a sales tax, you call it whatever you want. And at a gross level, you're taking the same. That's exactly right. But where the rubber hits the road is what happens distributionally, what happens by income bracket, what happens by industry segment. Think for a moment what the out, outcry would be if we said, we're going to collect all this money from the top 20%. Right. The advocate oh, oh change. Oh yeah, the God, we can't do that. Yeah, the advocacy would change. They would not be pushing for programs that all of a sudden they realized that they had to be paying out of pocket for. Um, and that is the big change that we're talking about there. The weekly top three, the big three topics for this week uh, where we deep do the deep dive back into it. Uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about the hypocrisy of this push for K through 12. And I saw this article in the ADN. Uh, where they're basically saying, oh, this one single vote will now decide everything in the world. How a single education vote is shaping the races around the... Uh, and this is what they want. They want to push it on this uh, single vote uh, with no... What's interesting is that there's no shades of gray on this, Brad. It's either you voted for against it or, you know, you voted for it or you voted against it. There is no shades of gray. There is no other discussion. If you didn't vote for it, you hate children, essentially, uh, is, is, the, uh, is the bottom line here. Give it to us. Well, yeah. So, so it's an article in the ADN. It talks about, you know, how, the, how the, the vote on overriding the governor's veto, which was decided by one vote. Um, and, of course, everybody's responsible for it now at every race. Uh, everybody says, well, you were the vote that decided that, that supported that supported the governor that was decided by the upheld the governor's veto by one vote uh, to uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, veto the, the legislation, the K through 12 legislation. And that's that's an issue in all these races. Here's the thing that bugs me about that. All these people who are pushing for increased government spending, talking about doing it for the children, doing it for Alaska families, 
doing it for, you know, for the benefit of the state as a whole, that it, that it helps out businesses because you have a higher educated population. It helps out, it helps out, uh, 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 the out migration problem because you attract more people with a better education system. All of that, I mean, let's just assume for a moment, the moment that all of that's true. Let's just assume all of that's true. But then those same people, Janice Park is my is my latest my latest blow up over this, or Walter Featherly. Then those people say, well, we're going to pay for it through PFD cuts. We're going to pay for it by taking money out of the pockets of middle and lower income Alaska families only, and largely only, in effectively only. We're going to take it by taking money out of the pockets of middle and lower income Alaska families to pay for this public good of, of education. That'll, you know, we're going to, we're going to make them pay disproportionately, heavily disproportionately. We're going to make them pay for this public good that's going to benefit the top 20%. It's going to benefit, um, benefit the oil industry because, you know, the oil industry is talking about we need a, a better educated workforce. It's going to benefit business because we're going to stall the oil migration problem. We're going to create a more educated, more educated public workforce. They want the public good but they don't want to pay for it. And the hypocrisy of those running around saying, we need to increase K through 12. We need to, need to increase this public good. We need to increase spending on this, but let's do it in a way where we don't have to pay for it. Is just that hypocrisy is just grating. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just huge. If you think it's a public good, pay for it pony up and say, look, we're going to have to have taxes for this and see how far you get with that. Pay for it. Propose how you're going to pay for it. This, this, this sleight of hand of, oh, we need this big public good. We need all the benefits. Everybody's going to benefit from it. We're all going to, we're all going to be much better off from it. Families are going to be good for, for, for it. This, this huge public good we're, we're, we're striving for Say how you're going to pony up yourself and pay for a part of it. And they don't do it. They don't do it. Janice Park doesn't do it. Walter Featherly doesn't do it. None of them do it. None of them have the guts. Well, with one exception, Agnes Moran down in, down in, down in Ketchikan. None of them have the guts to step up and say that they're willing to pay for a part of it themselves. It's, it's a public good that we don't want to pay for, we want to shove the costs off on everybody else. And I, and, and it's just, right. it's, it's, it's infuriating. If, if you think it's so good, then, then help pay for it yourself. Push a payment plan that includes you. Not, well, not, not shoving it off on everybody else. Yeah. And, and the, the second problem with this is that there is no nuanced conversation. It's all or nothing. There's no, there's no shades of, well, we could do a little bit of this, or we could do a little bit of that. We could talk about accountability. We could talk about, no, it's all or nothing. And we're just going to do it. And we're not even going to ask you how you'd like to pay for it. We're just going to take your PFD. That's the thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's a combination of all those things. What you're highlighting is, is the biggest component of it. But what always kills me is there is no nuanced conversation. It's $1,500 BSA increase or bust. There is no nuanced confirmation because they don't have to pay for it, Michael. There is no nuance. I mean, if if Jesse Bjorkman, if Walter Featherly, if Janice Park had to pay a portion of the bill themselves, there'd be a nuanced conversation. There'd be a, oh, maybe we don't need, you know, the this we can do with that. Or maybe we can do that more efficiently without doing this. Or maybe, you know, there's other ways to get to get funding in here for some of this, but they don't, there is no nuanced con con conversation because they're able to push the entire cost off on middle and lower income Alaska families and, and, and middle and lower Alaska families are out there working. They don't have time to, 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 you know, do the distributional analysis or analyze all this. They're just taking it. They're just, you know, yeah, okay. You're going to, you're going to keep, you're going to keep doing that. But those, those who are doing this, the candidates do know what they're doing. And they know that they're pushing something that they don't have to pay for. They know they're pushing something that's going to push the cost in a way that's going to push the cost off on middle and lower income Alaska families. And it's just, 
it, it, it's hypocrisy to the, to the, to the max. We're not going to have a nuanced conversation. We're not going to have any sort of conversation about this as long as they can push the costs off on somebody else. Right. Because nobody's fighting back on who pays. And this is just the latest. This just happens to be the latest shiny object. Education just happens to be the latest shiny object. If it wasn't this, it would be defined benefits. It would be some other kind of big state funding on something. Education just happens to be the latest vehicle, the latest crisis that they can't let go to waste to be able to push their agenda of more government spending. Yeah, and that is it's it's the it's the thing that they think they can go trick middle and lower income Alaska families about, right? Oh, it's good for you. It's good for your Johnny. It's good for it's good for your Jane. It's good for your good for your family. It's good for your job. It's good for all this. So just just let us do it. Just let us spend more to do it. We don't have to pay for it ourselves. We can push all the costs on you, but just let us go ahead and do it. I mean, it's it it is a it's a colonial state. We've got the upper crust in the state making the middle, making the, the, the other 80% of the state, the middle and lower income Alaska families, pay for all of it, including their share, the upper crust share. It, it, is, it, is, it is as much a colonial system as, as you know the old British colonial system with the U.S. You produce, you produce the money will enjoy the benefits. You produce the revenue, will enjoy, will enjoy the, the, the consequences of that. And we don't have to pay for it. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what questions should we be asking these candidates about the, about the education thing then? Because they, this whole article in the ADN, which by the way, I've posted up in the chat room for those of you who haven't seen it. If you're, uh, if you wanted, it's at the, it's at the Anchorage daily news and it's the, uh, uh, it's an opinion piece that uh, talks about a single education vote is shaping legislative races across Alaska. What I mean, what should we be asking with, uh, you know, for these legislators? I mean, it, who pays? Is that the main question here? That's it. That's it. You hit it right at the top of the show. Who pays? Who pays? Who's going to pay? You're not paying. You, Janice Park. You, Walter Featherly. You, Jesse Bjorkman. You're not paying for it. You're in the top 20%. And you voted yourself, and, and those of you who were legislators last session voted yourself a pay raise. So you so you're always in the top 20%. You're not paying for it. Who do you want to pay for this? Oh, it's free money. You know, it's free money, and we're just putting it to the public good. No, it's free money you're you're taking out of the pockets of middle and lower income Alaska families. So you can have free money in your pocket by not having to pay your proportionate share of the costs of, of, of what you're pushing. That's, that's what all this is about. It's all about getting more, as you say, getting more and more and more and more and more, but without them having to pay for it. With and them again, being able to push the costs off on everybody else. And, and again, yes, I mean, I agree. Donna just said not all legislators voted for the, we know that not all legislators voted with a pay raise. Brad's not trying to paint the broad, you know, with the broadest brush possible, but there are people in there that are doing it. And Brad, you're also highlighting why this is not strictly a Republican versus Democratic thing. We've got Republicans in there. Bjorkman is one who just want to spend more. It's the, it, it is the big government, more government crowd versus the less government crowd, essentially, is the better label, I think, in this, uh, in this discussion than party labels at this point. It is. It is. And it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's the, Big government versus the small government, and there's an amazing correlation between the big government and the top 20% non-res industries and oil. They want more because it benefits them in terms of a more educated workforce, they claim, more people employed, more, more, more things going on out there, more contracts, more consulting contracts. They want more, but they don't want to pay for it. And there's and there's a a, a, a a big correlation between the big government crowd and the top twenty percent. Those who aren't paying for this by pushing the cost down to middle and lower income Alaska families through through PFD cuts. Big correlation. And so yeah, you got you got Republicans like Jesse Bjorkman, who's in the top twenty percent. You got Democrats like Walter. Well, he says he's an independent, but we know 
got Democrats like Walter Featherly who are in the uh, who are in the uh, top twenty percent. You got Democrats like Janice Parker who are in the top twenty percent, and they're saying they're the, across the board. They're all saying just spend more, but don't make us pay for it. Let us use PFD cuts so we can take it out of your pockets instead of out of our pockets. Right. This is the Natasha model. And, you know, again, a Republican, but uh, don't make me pay. Uh, don't make me pay. Everybody else should pay. In fact, we had so much money, we didn't know where to spend it all at one point just a couple of years ago. And here we are moving forward. And and uh, I mean, you were right about one thing, Brad. If we continue in this direction, there is no PFD in the future. And that eventually will lead to taxes because they can't control their appetite, right? Yeah, but it'll be taxes on on the other. It'll be you know regressive sales taxes. It'll be it'll be the least burdensome form of tax on them. It'll be it'll be we've taken all your PFD. You don't have a cushion anymore. You, we've taken away all of your all of your cushion. We've stripped away all of that to our benefit, so we don't have to pay anything. And now we need more, so we're going to do it in a way that takes more from you than 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 from us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and we'll just and we'll just keep piling on with more and more and more. I hope you feel good about it in the end. Donna's like, not all legislators voted for the pay raise. I know Donna. And I mean Brad was po- he tried to he tried to, you know, he tried to point out that it's not everybody. And you know, Janice, or uh, Agnes Moran and uh I mean Ben. I mean, there's a few in there, but golly, there's a few in there that are telling the truth, and the rest are all just grin and bear it, honey brace yourself. Here it comes. I mean, that's kind of how it feels uh, with what we're doing these days. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes. Go ahead. I'm no. sorry. It, 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 it's just, it, it's just outrageous, Michael, that we've got people telling us, I mean, it is the betters argument. We got people telling us how good we're all going to be, how good, off, how, how well off we're all going to be. If we just increase K through 12, if we just restore university funding, if we just do this, we just spend on that defined benefit. You're right. They've got them queued up. There's a bunch of, bunch of stuff, bunch of spending in the, in the queue. That's just all going to pop up after, after they take care of one, how, how all we're better off of with, with all those things, except not all of us are paying for it. (laughs) (laughs) Those who are pushing it don't have to pay for it. So it's a free good to them to push it. Right. And right. so they and so they look oh all liberal and all progressive and all aren't I really out there doing doing great things for Alaska and doing great great things for the kids and doing great things for everybody? Shh, you don't have to pay for it. Yeah, <laughs> the biggest secret in the room is I'm not paying a thing, you know, and I'll continue to advocate for everything that I don't have to pay for because, <laughs> you know. Because again, we know better than you, you poor, poor, pitiful children. Just pay attention. Don't look at this man over here. I know what I'm doing better than you. I mean, that's what it all looks like uh, when it's all said and done. You're having, you're having fun with your dials today. <laughs> man, I, I know. I forgot that I had this whole panel, and I'm like, this is <laughs> great stuff today. I could do whatever I want. Um, <clears throat> Harold, I think you're just trying to troll us all. Harold says legislators' pay is still too low. If you want some talent, you got to raise the pay to two hundred thousand dollars. You know, <laughs> I mean, we're not looking for professional politicians. We're looking for a citizen legislature. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a citizen legislature, and instead, we've got professional politicians who want to spend all year finding ways to spend your money. Because you're paying them good money to do it. That's what they think they've got to do, right? They've got to get out there. They've got to be proponents of spending money. And they've found the ultimate trick that doesn't exist in any other state. The ultimate trick is they found a way to push all these things and they don't have to pay for it themselves. It is it is the ultimate trick out there. So they get to do good. They get to go to all these groundbreakings. They get to you know have shovels in their hands and look you know look like they're heroic. They look, they get to talk a good game about the university. They get to talk a good game about K through 12. They get to talk a good game about, about defined pensions, but they don't have to pay for it. And that's, that's the, you know, Alaska is going to, Alaska is going to die if we, if we keep this system going on, because what we're creating is this, is this super class 
that think they're entitled to everything and they don't have to pay for it. And, and look at the out-migration numbers. Where's the out-migration occurring? It's occurring in the middle and lower income brackets. Well, right. The top 20% is growing in this state. Right. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, how it's really, it's the working class that's moving out of the state of Alaska because they're bearing the burden. I mean, it's, it's pretty much, you could see that right there. And, and no... And- and what's Chuck Cop's solution to that? Spend more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Spend more. Uh, and no, Frank, I'm not saying that the citizen legislators should work for free. But if you're supposedly working for only really during the session, right, 120 days, maybe 160 days or 150 days, and you're making 90000 bucks a year, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, your, your, uh, you know, your workload in the rest of the year outside of the session should be pretty light. Uh, one or two days a month, maybe, you know, if you're really, you know, but you're making $90,000 a year to work for essentially four or five months. That's a, that's a pretty good deal when it's all said and done. Yeah. And they're expanding, they're expanding their workload. I mean, they're going to conferences or they're, 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 you know, giving speeches or, or they're doing something, so that essentially they don't have to work. I mean, essentially they, they can live off the off the legislative salary. We 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 we've raised it in a way, and, and there's a lot of pros and cons, but we've raised it in a way where it's become a full time job, even though we say it's not a full time job. They make it a full time job. They make work in order to justify that in order to justify that salary. That's the nature of government, man. We expand, we expand to fail uh, to fill all available dollars that you know whatever it takes to expand our authority or our workload or our purview because that is the nature of government. That is it right there. We got one more segment here, Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets is our guest. We're moving on to the number 3 of the weekly top 3 and it is the you smell that? It smells Smells like desperation, desperation and sweat. Jesse Bjorkman is uh, kind of reaching into the uh, into the uh, dirty tricks bag and is trying to throw some stuff and sling some stuff around. Brad, what is the what is Bjorkman's desperation on display here? Well, Bjorkman's uh, distorting, uh, misrepresenting what uh, what Ben Carpenter proposed uh, as a as a fiscal plan. Bjorkman's taken one piece of it. The sales tax, and as opposed to the entire plan, taking one piece out of what Ben's proposal was, and said Ben's going to layer the sales tax on top of PFD cuts, on top of everything else, and so you're going to be having PFD cuts and the sales tax on top of that. Right, and, right, and and when when somebody starts mi- misrepresenting somebody else's record that bad. It's a sign of desperation. It's a sign that they can't defend their own actions. So they're going to misrepresent the other guy's actions in a way to try to attack him to take the to take the uh, to take the the spotlight off of off of his record. Here's what's really going on in that race. Here's what's really going on between the between the two proposals. Ben called everybody's bluff. Ben said, here's a fiscal plan, a whole fiscal plan that resolves the state situation. And as part of that, we get everybody contributing. We, 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 we take the PFD, we set the PFD to one side. We don't use PFD cuts. Other, we re, we, we, we uh, uh, restructure PFD to P- POMV 50-50, and then we set it to one side, no more PFD cuts to fund government. Everybody has to contribute in Ben's proposal through a sales tax. He, he called their bluff and he said, okay, if you're going to spend, then let's structure it in a way where you're spending also, and let's structure it in a way where we've got some, we've got some constraints on it, a, a spending cap, uh, various other things that, that put some constraints on spending. But part of that is structured in a way where you spend, where, where you have to pay also. And Bjorkman can't defend that. Because when you look at the numbers, when you look at, at Ben's 2% sales tax, it is better, paying for government through a 2% sales tax is better for 80% of Alaska families. It, the, the, the amount taken, even if you assume that all your entire income is spent in a way subject to the sales tax, even if you assume every penny 
that you've got is it, that you spend, that you earn is spent in a way subject to the sales tax. Even if you assume that, sales taxes take less from 80% of Alaska families, middle and lower income Alaska families than PFD cuts. And so Ben's proposed a way, Ben's really put a, a put up or shut up to Bjorkman. It's, he's really proposed a way as part of his comprehensive plan. He's really proposed a way where he says, all right, Borkman, I'm going to take your spending and I'm going to pay for it in a way that's better for 80% of Alaska families. Bjorkman can't defend that. Right. He, can, right. he can't, he can't, or, I mean, the numbers are too stark. He can't right. say, oh, PFD cuts are better for everybody. They aren't. You can do the numbers. Right. I've done the numbers. They're going to be in Friday's column, Friday's landmine column. They aren't. For 80% per, of Alaska families, sales taxes are better. So Bjorkman can't defend that. So what he's doing instead is misrepresenting Ben's position. Right. Well, and he's and it's it's actually working. If you go and look at Randy Daly's column over at Must Read Alaska, which is a defense of Ben Carpenter. And again, this is, you know, this is the plan from the fiscal policy working group. This was a bicameral bipartisan commission that came together and came up with this plan and unanimously supported this plan. It was a full plan where one component, like one eighth of the plan was a sales tax or a new revenue component. Uh, so it's not just one thing, but it's working, Brad. If you look at the comments on that must read article, and that's why I recommend everybody who's listening this morning, go over to must read and comment on it because there's a lot of conservatives up there who are upset. Oh, so he wants taxes after all, not understanding that there's a nuance to this, that he said he would not support this without an enshrining of the PFD. He would not support a tax without uh, you know, restoring a, a portion of the PFD and cutting government and all these other components, that it's just part. And that's the thing. We've gotten to the part where there is no nuance. It is all or nothing. And this is just what we were talking about in the education thing. He's he basically saying, I started this conversation because we can't pass it all in one bill. So we've got to get pieces and parts out, but it's all got to come together. And I won't support this unless all these other things come into play. And it's better for Alaskans. But they don't hear that. They hear tax and they immediately want to break out the, the pitchforks and torches. And, it, you know, why is Bork, Bork, uh, Bjorkman doing it? Because as you could see in the comment section of Must Read, on some Alaskans, on some conservatives, it's working. Yeah, he's doing it because he can't defend his own position. He's doing it because his position is, is, is flat out wrong for 80% of Alaska families. He's doing it because his position takes more out of the pocket of middle and lower income Alaska uh, Kenai residents uh, than, than, uh, than, than Ben's proposal does. Michael, part of the, we've talked about language, we've talked about the Orwellianization of, a, of Alaska fiscal language. Part of the problem, I think, is when we talk about new taxes or new revenue sources. And that leads to the impression that it's piling on top of whatever revenue sources are, are, are already there. What we really ought to be saying in this, and me included, and, I, and I'll make this point in the Friday column, what we really ought to be saying is replacement revenues. Replacements that, that have a lower impact, replacement revenues that have a lower impact on 80% of Alaska families, on the overall Alaska economy, have a lower impact than what Bjorkman and others are proposing to do. It has a slightly higher impact on Bjorkman because as a member of the as a member deep into the top 20%, Jesse's going to have to pay a little bit more um, if we have if we have a sales tax than if we have than 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 using PFD cuts. But for 80% of Alaska families, 80% of Alaska families, those in the middle and lower income brackets, a sales tax is proposed by Ben Carpenter, the broad-based sales tax that pushes a bunch of the burden off on up on uh, off on uh, uh, tourists and non-residents and others, a broad-based tax like that takes less from 80% of Alaska families than, as a replacement revenue source, takes less from 80% of Alaska families than uh, than Bjorkman's uh, PFD cuts. And Bjorkman can't defend it, so he's just he's after misrepresenting things in order to try to you know as a desperation move to try to hang on to his hang on to his seat. And one of the things they continue to <clears throat> to ignore is the impact and the effect on the private economy. Again, this goes back to the disconnect between the public and the private economy, right? I mean, they are, you know, they, they don't care as long as the government economy is protected. 
They could care less what's happening in the private economy. Middle and lower class people, working class people are moving out. No big deal. We've got more millionaires. We're okay. Um, you know, as long as long as they're there and the business is there and the service industries are there, we're okay because the economy is okay. The government economy, which is what we really care about. Yeah. And the part and the part that I that I want to keep adding on to that is and we don't have to pay for it. Isn't this great? We get all this increased government goods. I, Jesse Bjorkman, the teacher, I get to save my job. I may even get a pay increase out of pay increase out of this on my on my on my government side, on my uh, 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 public education side, on my K through twelve side. This is all good. We get to, we get to save all this, and I don't have to pay for it. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. All I have to do is mis misrepresent Ben's position enough to to pull the wool over enough people's eyes to keep me in that position. Right, right. And that's where he's at right now. So I'm hoping that more of you go out and uh, um, I, I'm hoping more of you go out and read this must read article uh, from Randy and, uh, and, and comment Randy Daly down in Kenai. You should go back and comment on it because again, there's a lot of, of, of what, you know, what I think are probably conservative Republicans who are like, Oh, you're dead to me. I can't believe you're suggesting this again. Not, understanding the nuances of what he's trying to say here. Somebody's got to talk about this, Brad. Somebody's got to talk about the, you know, the, the, the plan, the fiscal policy, the plan that could get us out of this and all the pieces and parts, but nobody wants to be, nobody, nobody wants to touch it because they know it would stop the party for them, that it couldn't right. be business as usual. Well, I, if, 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 if Bjorkman's successful in this, in in misrepresenting Ben's position, it's going to be a long time before we find somebody else who's willing to step up and 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 propose an overall sane fiscal plan. We're just going to keep going down this road of more and more PFD cuts, more and more expansion of government because the top twenty percent, the ones pushing the expansion of government, don't have to pay for it. We're just going to keep going more and more down that road. Ben and others in the fiscal policy working group tried to draw a line and say, look. We've got a solution to this. It involves, yes, we, we've now dug ourselves so big a hole that we've got to pay for part of it ourselves. We've got to pay for part of government ourselves. But here's a better way to do that. Here's a less burdensome way to do that. Here's a better way for 80% of Alaska families uh, to do that. And, and that is that, that proposal is sort of the key to getting ourselves situated going forward in a way that does start bringing down. Uh, government spending does start curbing uh, the the appetite uh, to to spend more and more and more. If Yorkman's successful in picking a piece out of that and saying, "Oh, shiny new toy," and mi misrepresenting what that does, misrepresenting what it is, arguing that it's an increase as opposed to a replacement, then it's going to be a long time before somebody else uh, goes down the road of 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 proposing a, uh, an overall fiscal plan. This has always been my fear when we talk about taxes. You and I have had this conversation back and forth many times that, you know, my fear is that we're going to get some kind of tax in and they are going to tack it onto the top. That's why there has to be a constitutional spending limit. That's why there has to be other things in place that force it to become replacement revenue rather than additional revenue. Yep, exactly right. And Ben's got it. Ben's got the plan. And others that were in that fiscal policy working group have the plan uh, that brings that together, that replaces the most regressive tax ever proposed, according to Matt Berman, ICER economics professor Matt Berman, the most regressive tax ever proposed, PFD cuts, that replaces that with a less regressive tax, replaces that with a tax that takes less from middle and lower income Alaska families, 80% of Alaska families, uh, than, uh, than, than PFD cuts but also puts restrictions right. on spending so that you don't have, you know, those who try to turn it into a pile on more. And this, is, and this is why you've advocated instead of a sales tax, this is why you've advocated on a flat tax, right? So, you know, 3% or whatever flat tax, because then it's an equitability issue because then everybody pays the same amount of their income to help fund state government. Yeah. Ben's proposed sales tax actually isn't that bad. It's still regressive. But what that what his broad based tax is doing is picking up a lot of contribution from non residents, from tourists, from from business, uh, 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 frankly, who would who would be subject to the sales tax. He's picking up a lot of revenue from that, and so 
the, the amount of revenue that's being assigned to individuals, to families, is actually fairly low. Um, uh, it may be as much as, as only half the tax base is really, is really families. And so that broad base tax, it's still regressive, but, but it actually may come out because of the broad base and because it's pushing so much away, it actually may come out to, to take less from Alaska families than even a, a flat tax. I'm doing that. That's going to be part of the Friday column to compare that. And Ben's proposal is actually, may actually even be better. Uh, uh, in that regard, because of its broad base, and so it's it's a it's a it's a great proposal to have out there. It's one that needs to be treated seriously, and 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 Bjorkman's misrepresentation of it. I mean, the guy's just not honest. Bjorkman's just not honest because he's claiming things that Ben isn't proposing. He's claiming that it, that it, that it sits on top of uh, of existing revenue sources. It doesn't. That's not what Ben's proposing. And so Bjorkman's getting desperate, can't defend his own position, can't defend, you know, defend the 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 PFD cuts that he's that he relies on, right? Because he doesn't have to pay for it. Uh, def- can't defend his own position, and so he's just out there, you know, just spinning stuff off, making stuff up uh, about about Ben's position that is just unconscionable. Well, and he does and, and, and dishonest. And he knows because it's a sense, it's a tender spot. He knows it's a sensitive spot for people on the, on the right, the conservatives, any talk of taxes, he knows it's a, it's a vulnerable point. And that's why he, you know, spins the lie into it and lets people draw their own conclusions. That's, that's what he's doing here. And it is, it is false uh, and it is misleading and it's an outright fallacy, but all he has to do is throw it out there and then let, I mean, again, just go look at the comments on this article. And I was just shocked as I was reading it last night. And I'm like, man, th- th- you know, these people are not getting it. Again, no nuance whatsoever. Oh, you talked about taxes, but I talked about taxes in a component of something else. And it's only contingent if we get these other things. And oh, no, you talked about taxes. You're dead to me kind of thing. See, th- this is this is where the language, the Orwellianization of Alaska language is, is coming back to haunt us. PFD cuts are taxes. I mean, Randy can go off with whatever the hell he's going to do now, but PFD cuts are taxes. And to and to try to deny that then sets up Bjorkman being able to say, oh, well, he wants to do taxes. I don't want to do taxes. I only want to do PFD cuts. Uh, I don't want to do taxes. PFD Which cuts tax. are taxes. We need to call a spade a spade. <laughs> I mean, that's a thing. Uh, Cindy said, Brad. I'll fly you to Kenai tomorrow just to call out Bjorkman at the meeting down there. If you, he, she says, she'll fly you down there if you want to come down there and call him out. Uh, I think that would be well worth it. Um, and uh, Kyle says, does this fiscal policy working group specifically call for statewide taxes or more nebulous new rep? There's two different sections of new revenue in the fiscal policy working group plan. One is a discussion on a tax on a tax structure, and they highlight the South Dakota tax model. The second thing is new revenue from uh, resources and and trying to expedite resources at timber and oil and minerals and looking at all those other things. So it does specifically talk about two different types of revenues in the fiscal policy working group plan, Brad. Oh, Kyle, the troll. I don't know. I don't know how to deal with Kyle. The troll. He, he just, just loves, he loves like Bjorkman. I mean, he's like Bjorkman. He makes stuff up to sort of, you know, to, to, to get, get people spun off in a, in a, yeah. in a different direction. He just let's loves focus. Let's stuff. focus on the important thing. The important thing is Jesse Bjorkman is misleading falsely misleading, falsely claiming things about Ben's position that's just not true. And he's doing it because he can't defend his own position. Right, right. Well, and that's going to be the tough one. We'll see if people buy it. We'll see if we'll see if if people uh, jump into it and uh, and and buy it. I, I'm hoping not. Um, I think Ben's got a very good reputation on the peninsula uh, as far as somebody who works very, very hard to try and keep Alaska's best interests at heart. And you can go back and look at what he did uh, in Ways and Means this last year to try and make this happen. And just the enormous amount of pushback from the business as usual politicians who don't want the situation fixed. They like it the way it is, quite oh, honestly. They, they like it the way it is. Um, all right, Brad. Well, we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming on board as always. Michael, as always, thanks for having me. Go, go have a drink now. Put a little Irish in your coffee and uh, and relax a little bit. And uh, we'll talk again next week, okay? Great. 
Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the weekly top three. 